Hello, dear little friends. Welcome to Dive into Pooja's Books. Here we read books and we see what amount of knowledge book reading can bring back to you. So you get inspired to read a lot of books. So our today's topic is satellites. What are satellites? So a satellite is an object that circles around a body in space. So some satellites are natural, just like our planets in our solar system. They are satellites. They orbit around the sun. You know the moon. It orbits around the earth. So that's a natural satellite. And some satellites are artificial, which are deliberately sent from the earth to spin or orbit around the earth. So the artificial satellites, they are man-made satellites. They are sent to the space in order to send, receive or bounce back information of different areas of the earth. So how does the artificial satellite which is sent to the space stay in an orbit around the earth? Why does not it fall back to the earth? Why does not it just get lost in the space? How do you think it will work? So let us check that out from our young reader with an experiment. It's very interesting. Take a look. Hello, I'm going to tell you how do spaceships, space stations and satellites stay in the orbit of the earth. Imagine that this ball is a, is a satellite and this is the real Earth floating around in mid space. The string represents the force of gravity. If I increase the thrust of the satellite, this is what will all happen. As you see, it's in perfect orbit of the Earth. If I increase uh, the thrust, Oof, my satellite did break. Now, if I get it back into normal orbit and then decrease the thrust, it will plummet back onto Earth. These same forces are at work when a real satellite is orbiting the, the actual Earth. Except, there's one thing that's different, and it's the string. Unlike the string, gravity is invisible. Bye and thank you. Thank you, Shlok. That was a very interesting experiment and very informative. So to summarize, satellites are launched on rockets into space to reach their orbits and the speed a satellite must travel to stay in space is called its orbital velocity. And as you saw in this experiment, there has to be calculations done about the gravitational force between the Earth and the satellite and the speed at which the satellite should be orbiting so that it stays in the orbit. And all these calculations are nothing but rocket science. So now we know what are satellites and how do they stay in orbit in the space. But what are the types of artificial satellites and why are they sent to the space? What's the need? Do you know there are around 1300 active artificial satellites in space right now orbiting the earth? So why? So here comes the answer. There are many several uses of the satellites so, and some of them being for scientific investigation, for earth observation. So do you know you can consider the satellite as nothing but a device or a camera which is taking selfies of the earth. So it is constantly taking the photographs of the earth from several directions and sending the information back to the control room on the earth where there are scientists who study this information and this is how we come to know about the earth. So earth observation is one of the primary uses. It also includes weather forecasting and tracking the storms. 
scientists. So you can find out that scientists can see from the satellite images if there is a storm and they can forecast it. They can forecast the amount of pollution. So there are other kind of uh, satellites like the communication satellites. So the communication satellites send billions of voice, video or data messages in the space and then those messages are sent to their receivers and this is how we have the communication done. So for the communication satellites can be used for satellite television or they can also be used to make telephone calls. So you are using mobile phones or cells so often right now. Do you know the artificial satellites are making your cell phones possible? How does it work? So you make a call. Your cell phone sends a signal to a tower. Now that tower sends the signal into the space. It is picked up by a communication satellite. Now the satellite sends the signal to a tower back on the earth near where you are calling. Finally, the second tower sends the signal to the phone of the person you are calling. See how the satellite is making your telephone, your mobile phones possible? Similarly, you might have seen the antenna used for satellite television. So that antenna is taking some signals from the satellite and you are seeing the images and the video on your television. Another use, satellites can also be used for navigation. So you might have first heard about GPS, the global positioning system. You use it in your cars, in your mobile phones, to reach out to different places today. Imagine the world if you don't have GPS, how do you visit some unknown person just with your address? So the satellites, they use this triangulation system for navigation and to take you around places. Then what more? It can be used for military purposes to take the photography and for communications. It can also be used for spying. Some countries use satellites for spying on their enemies. So and yes, there is a fun fact here. Do you know there is this satellite called the International Space Station, which is the largest artificial satellite currently orbiting the Earth. And you know, there are actually astronauts living in there. Around six astronauts can live in there and they can observe the space, take photographs. They can observe what, how it is happening and they can study everything staying inside there. It is like a small home. Now, there are some other satellites which look outward into the space. So there are these space telescopes like the Hubble telescope, which look far into the solar system and beyond. They send back photos that help us understand our universe. So instead of taking the photographs of the Earth, we are taking off outside universe and sending it back for us to study and understand about the universe. So now that we have seen that satellites serve many different purposes but they all have few things in common inside. So all satellites have a power source such as solar panels. They can also have a battery to store the power. All satellites have instruments that keep them in contact with the earth. They can take pictures, they can send messages, they also receive instructions and path changes from ground control. Let us look at some history of the satellites. So do you know what? So the Soviet Union launched the first satellite in October 1957. It was called the Sputnik 1. Then later, many other countries started launching their own satellites like the United States, India, everyone started the same. Do you know what? 
as more satellites are launched, the chances of a crash increases. In 2009, two communication satellites, one American and one Russian, collided in space. And also, all the satellites getting launched, they are also creating space junk. So the cameras or the other parts of the satellites which are just lost or some satellites themselves which are lost in space, they are all now creating the space junk which they also term as debris. So now that we have seen a lot about artificial satellites, how they work, what are its uses, why and how it stays in orbit, what are its main parts. Are you now more interested to go and check out some books about the artificial satellites? Isn't it so interesting? So now let's move on to some natural satellites. So as we said earlier, some moon is a natural satellite orbiting around the Earth. There are more such moons or natural satellites which are orbiting the other planets also. The Earth's silver grey moon has loomed large in our lives since ancient times. Its orbit around the Earth inspired our calendar month. Also, its gravitational pull creates the high and the low tides in the Earth's oceans or even in the large lakes. This is how the Earth's moon is important to us. Now, similar to the Earth's moon, the other planets also have their own moons. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, has around 53 artificial moons. So one of its largest moon, Europa, is covered with a huge ocean on an icy crust. Another of uh, Jupiter's moons, Io, is covered with more than 400 active volcanoes. Saturn has a moon called Phoebe that orbits in a different direction to its other moons and gives off a dust that creates a huge dark ring around the planet. So now you know why that ring is around the Saturn planet. So similarly, the other planets have also some moons and uh, this is what you can see in this picture. I hope you really liked this interesting story around the satellites and if you like it please press the like button and subscribe to my channel it's free for more such videos see you soon thank you bye bye